during Poltergeist 3, I've read that Heather suffered from a parasitic disease that she got from some bad water she drank in a campground. Uh, does that sound accurate? Because, again, the Internet, oh, you never can trust the Internet. Right. Well, we lived in Big Bear at the time that she'd gotten sick. And so I'm not sure if it was a campsite or just um, a, a parasite that was in the water in Big Bear. Um, and but from what I'm, I'm gathering, you know, you know, we can't really talk much because of the Kaiser lawsuits and confidentiality and stuff. But um, she did have a congenital problem when she was born. Okay. And so things like that um, just attributed to, you know, her the parasites and her and the, 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 the things that happened to her. OK. And, and was it the steroids that puffed up her face in that film? Yes, that is correct. Um, her, her feet were really puffy and her cheeks were really puffy as well. Did that affect how she felt? Because um, you couldn't really. tell. She never really cared about I mean, she wasn't really one to look about that, but she did kind of say, oh, my face looks, you know, looks fat and stuff. And, you know, and but nobody ever treated her differently. So she knew what it was about. And everyone that was close to her knew, you know, her situation. So, and it only lasted for a little while and then it would go away and then it would come back up again and stuff. So she knew, you know, she knew what her situation was. Okay. Was that a concern at all for the director of the film? No, not at all. They they just let it slide the way it was, and they knew what her situation was. And if she had to rest, they let her rest. And if she, you know, and then she went, she would only rest for a little few minutes, and then she's back up again. So she never missed hardly any time at all working. One thing I'm wondering about too is, there's a lot of talk about whether or not the end of the movie got reshot after Heather passed. Does the release version of the film match the script that Heather had? No, it actually was reshot. Um, the original version, they actually had her dying in the movie. Like it was, they actually had her, the whole death scene in the movie. Really? Um, so what they did was when they, she was actually did pass away, they went ahead and they reshot it with um, them holding, holding Carol Ann or Heather and going the way they ended it. They didn't want to actually show her actually passing away in the movie. So it was, it was reshot. If you don't mind, let's talk about no, that not. horrible day. Heather tragically passed away on February 1st, 1988, 30 years ago. And while I know this is probably going to be the worst part of the interview, can you, from your perspective, tell us about Heather's final days? Um, yeah, I was actually um, working at Wendy's, my the fast food place, and she actually came in to see me the night before um, for dinner. And then I was going to a friend's house to spend the night, and she went back to her place. And so I don't know what was going on in the evening of that of it happening. I just know that the next morning um, she had um, I got a phone call from a mother saying that Heather was, uh, had passed out. She, you know, got up, got up to walk, walk around. She passed down on the floor, um, and the ambulance was called, and they took her to the hospital. So I didn't see anything until I got to the actual hospital. So I missed those moments of when she, from the night I last, I last saw her to the you know, after that. Mm-hmm. The last one I saw her talk to her was when she came to see me at work. What were those final moments like? I mean, you were at work, so that had to be hard. It's not like you... I mean, yeah, it was, I remember like to this moment now talking, I can remember seeing her sitting at the table, like across the way, like in the dining area. And I was like a cashier and I, uh, you know, I go out, take a little break and sit with them while they ate dinner a little bit. And we just kind of joked around and stuff. And then she's like, oh, okay, I'm going to go back and, you know, it's time to go back and get ready for the football game and, you know, the kind of thing, you know, and stuff. So that was really, you know, what, what the whole, the whole day was, there was no like harsh words to each other or nothing. And, you know, it was like, okay, I'll see you later. And, you know, and off she went. And then I went to my friend's house, and, you know, there was no cell phones at the time, so it wasn't like I could call a texter. Right. You know, it was just, oh, you'll see you the next day, and that was that. Well, so. there's no reason to think you wouldn't. I mean. Well, of course, and, and, and I'd like to go back to a moment when you, I said that Heather never complained about anything. In fact, the week before, um, she wasn't feeling good at, at PE, and she um, didn't want to stop, and they're like, they, they told her, you know, you could stop if you want to. And she's like, no, I'm going to keep running, keep running. And so a few days beforehand, she wasn't feeling up to par, but she wanted to make sure she kept, you know, pushing through and do what she had to do. Um, you know, I would have been like, I ain't running. I'm sitting down. But she didn't <laughs> want to make sure she did everything she had to do and complete everything. So that was nothing. Heather never complained about anything, how she felt bad or nothing. So when she did, when she wasn't feeling good and she complained, you knew there was something wrong. I visited the grave of your sister. I've been in that cemetery. And the faceplate says, Beloved daughter and sister, Carol Ann, Poltergeist 1, 2, and 3. Was the decision to include that famous film credit made by your parents or was that I mean, how was it that? It was brought up to us by MGM because they did help take care of some of the expenses. Um, it was like a joint, um, and a joint decision. Um, they offered to help pay for some of the stuff, and so they wanted her buried in Los Angeles. And so that was, you know, they, they came to us and offered to help us with the expenses. And so, you know, we agreed to go ahead and put Poltergeist 1, 2, and 3 on the nameplate because we knew it was going to be an iconic type of thing for people to come by and see. It definitely is.